Hey, everybody. It's John Angel here to answer questions today. We've got a lot that have been mailed in, so let's just jump in, Angel. First of all, I want to thank you very much for being faithful in your giving. We sure appreciate you. We could not do this without you. That's a fact. Thank you so much. Okay, Joe, where do I draw the line? My kids always want new phones, new gaming systems, the new everything. I know they don't need it, but I also want to give them a life I didn't have growing up. Where is the line? I wouldn't give nothing. <laughs> I love how out joke just goes to an extreme right out the gate. Well, when I was a kid, we didn't get nothing. We had a dime store in town. We didn't go there. So we played mud, what? played with okay. rocks, okay. played with sticks. We understand that, but you're not a kid now. So, and- so let's spoil them. Let's give them everything under the sun and get them to confuse. What do you want? Nothing. I got everything. I don't need a thing. I don't need God. I don't need you. I don't need a thing. I've got it all. There's extremes. I'm telling you, I'm not being funny. I'm telling the truth. So yeah, I want to give my kids something nice and I do, but I'm going to give them everything because especially in school, they're going to come up with something new every day. Oh, dad, Billy Bob had this. Jimmy Bob had that. Billy Bob had that. <laughs> well, you're not going to get it, you know, and, and I, you can't just shut them down. So well, I'll think about it, but you know, it's probably going to go by the wayside in 30 days and what they're excited about. They're going to be excited about something else. And and you got to kind of be the mature one in the group. Like, well, I'll think about it, but we're not going to do it today. The win. I don't know, but not today. <laughs> Angel's going to take over now and share her side. <laughs> well, I don't, I don't think things spoil kids. I don't think that's what it is that spoils kids. Cause I mean, my kids had a lot of stuff, especially before I divorced Got a little, get a little thinner after <laughs> after that divorce, but uh, but that's I, not funny, but it is. Well, it's true, and then reality. Uh, but I always thought that the lack of boundaries was yes, what, what spoils a kid. Yes, ma'am. And uh, and you know, I would not always say yes. Uh, but what I found was if I withheld things from my kids, for example, I had a friend that was a real health nut and she would send like sprout sandwiches and stuff to school. <laughs> and I had a junkie lunch. I'm going to be honest with you. Cause when I was growing up, if you got a bologna sandwich, you were lucky. That's right. And best it was fried. You were very lucky. <laughs> I never, I never got a fried one. My mom, <laughs> my mom would not go to that much trouble. Yeah, but if it was fried that your mother loved you. Well, okay. That's a whole different story. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, I just really packed, a great lunch. And every night before I go to bed, while I was just winding down, I would draw a cartoon on the lunch bag. Yes. And I would say, Charlie Brown thinks you're cool or whoever it was I was doing that yeah. day. And my kids love that. And other, made them very popular at school. Yes. Yeah, they've even saved some of those. But you know, what's funny is and then I had another mother say, you got to quit. <laughs> with the bags i can't draw like that and so it was pretty funny but um what i found was my friends whose children couldn't eat sprouts that's all they could eat i mean i'm sorry with sprouts and everything one day she says to me she got my friend got the mumps or something and she said could you pick up my child for school i said yes but i didn't have time to cook breakfast and i grabbed some cheetos from the Oh. From the uh, pantry, and I knew this kid. I mean, they came to my house and went in my pantry, and they thought they were like, a, We've gone to heaven. Yeah. We've gone I'd to say, heaven. Just get whatever you want in there, and they'd just be like, Woohoo. Well, let me tell you, that kid jumps in the car, and I said, Here's your breakfast. And I handed her a bag of Cheetos. I mean, I didn't hardly back out of that driveway. I look over, her face is pure <laughs> orange and everything. Now, here's the funny part she grew up, those kids grew up, and their mother told me last time I saw her, they're all adults now. They live on cheeseburgers yep. and fast food. Yep. My kids are just the opposite yes, because they, they had it available to them. They're always doing some kind of healthy eating thing. Always. Unbelievable. And they're about as big as yeah, this right here. Cold, healthy, they don't, get yeah. out. So, so I'm, I don't think it stings. Now, I do think you can over... An, overdo it with your kids for sure you can't always say yes but i don't think it's things i think it's you know boundaries talking to your kids yeah people are scared today of teenagers so they throw them stuff 
Well, I got that, and that's got to be the bottom line. You're not going to do it out of fear. You're doing anything out of fear, it's going to bite you on the backside. You got to do it because I love you. I, I could have that. Uh, we're not going to right now, or we can't afford it right now, but we'll put it on the list of the stuff to get. And, and you stay positive when you stay real positive with them. So, but you can't get, you can't get a, you're not playing a game. Okay. We're not trying to keep up with the Joneses. No, we're not keeping up with anybody. No. And, and I really didn't know anything about video games. I know my son loves them, <laughs> but one day I was in this store and there was this big line and I said, what are you guys in line for? And they said, there's a brand new video game. We just came out this morning. We're all getting it. <laughs> and I go, what's the name of it? And they told me, I can't remember what it was, but I said, oh, well. I'll surprise my son and get that. That'll be a nice little surprise for him because he knows I know nothing about video yeah. games. And so when I gave that kid that game, you would have thought I gave him a diamond ring. Come on, mama. Because it was something that he really would have wanted. Mom's a five-star mother. Yeah, I was, I was pretty popular that week. Woo. So I, I just think you have to check your heart. The fact is, mom, if you feel like you're on the brink of doing too much, you probably are. Yep. Thank you. So I would follow your gut because you know what? That's usually the Holy Spirit. That's going to be the Holy Ghost right there. And uh, because they can't, I mean, we could sit here and talk all day long about whose kids have what and who didn't have what. And You're not competing with anybody. Mm -mm. Just trying to be a good parent. Just television makes you feel like you are. Yeah, it does. So whatever's in your heart to do. Do it. Do it. The Bible says not to give under compulsion. Are out of necessity, necessity, but what you've purposed in your heart to give. Yes. So there you go. And I think that's has to do with your giving at church, but I think it has to do with your giving to others too. It's all it's a lifestyle that's going to be critical when if they grow up thinking like Angel did with her kids, like I got a whole pantry full of stuff. You can have it anytime you want. Well, they they didn't hardly eat anything. Why? Because I could get it when I wanted it. I had to throw candy away like you wouldn't believe. Oh man. They could care less about it. It's funny. That was a great lesson between me and my friend. Meanwhile, her kids had to drudge through horrible lunches. <laughs> I'd say that those lunches look horrible. I'd go with <laughs> Ugh. Anyway, all I can say is I'm anxious. My therapist says I need to get on medication, but I know there's freedom in Jesus. How do I overcome anxiety? Well, anxiety is the same thing as fear. And the uh, Bible says, perfect loves cast out fear. So the Bible says about roll your cares over the Lord. For he cares for you. So you have to mentally, and I think verbally do something. Lord, you know, I'm going to think about this too much. I have done, I'm concerned and I'm not supposed to be concerned about anything. So Lord, I'm going to right now, mentally roll this over onto you. And you may have to do it 20 times a day. Lord, I'm thinking about this again. Every day, and I'm taking it back, but. I'll roll this back over to you. But now I'm going to do what I need to do, whatever part that is. And the natural, I'm going to, you know, if I need to pay something, work something, help somebody, I'm going to do my part, but I'm not going to get anxious about it because that is, that's, that is fear. Fears of the devil. And that man, you get the devil getting you, he'll mess you up. You'll be, you'll be seeing a therapist till Jesus comes trying to figure out what's going on. It's like, you got to roll that thing over into God. That's not my deal. That's God's deal. God, you said, I'm going to have to give you a beloved sweet sleep. I'm going to sleep good tonight. And I pray that all the time. Lord, I thank you for a great night's sleep. Asian, I'll be laying in every night. Father, I thank you for a great night's sleep tonight. You can give us sweet sleep. You're going to talk to us when we go to sleep. We get up and walk during the day. You never leave us nor forsake us. The angel of God kept around about us so many. You can't even count them. There's so many angels around us tonight. So praise and God. Then, and then I add in a real quiet prayer that says, in God, please, no snoring from <laughs> the other side of the bed, please. <laughs> and that prayer works. Believe it or not, it does. Or else I go to the other room. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if I wait, age not there. Evidently, I'm snort her out. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, well, I want to say there's seasons in life where it's the stress of life. The Bible says there's three things that choke out the word. Yep. The cares of this world. Yep. The deceitfulness of riches and the lust of other things. They're and real. today, I think the cares of this world is a huge thing. Big thing. Because we're inundated with it all over the media, everywhere. We hear about it all the time. <laughs> So, I mean, I'll say when I was going through a divorce, yep. I was stressed to the nines. My life was being put in turmoil. My job was done. I, I lost everything. I, most people don't lose a career. I lost my career. Lost your home. Lost, lost my home. Car. I lost you everything. Lost, having to ride with people. Lost everything. I and, mean, everything. Yes. Oh, I didn't have a car for a year. That's a whole nother story. But uh, it, it was terrible. But anyway, the stress was very, very high. 
And I finally went to the doctor and said, I can't sleep. I am so anxious. Da, 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 da. And he said, I'm going to give you something temporarily to take the edge off. I think that's okay. Personally, yeah. I think if you, you can't get, get peace through the word, which I think is the best place to yes. get it. But if you can't, I think you do need to go to your therapist or your doctor. Now, now I say that through gritted teeth somewhat because I was in a very high pressure job for about four years. Mm. And I saw so many women get addicted to medication yeah, but because it, of the pressure that was in that work job. Side of it. Yeah. And, and uh, finally one day I said, my father had passed away and I said, I am not living. I'm existing. And my dad would not want me to do this anymore. So I thought if I got to go get three jobs to make up for this salary, I'm yeah. going to do it. Cause I, it's not worth w- what's going on here. And sometimes you're going to have to take, make those kind of choices too. Again, I think you should follow peace. Follow after peace. Yes. And um, the Holy Ghost is a good is, friend. Yes. And he is the very present help in a time of need. He's not goofy. He's not cast for the ghost. He's with you all the time. Never leaving. And he no wants you to have peace. He wants you to sleep good. He wants you to be restful, not be anxious about anything. He does. And mm-hmm. I would just start speaking those, get scriptures in your heart, tape them up everywhere. I guarantee we put on paper plates, put them on the wall. We have the mind of Christ. We have the peace of God that passes all understanding, keeping our hearts and our minds by Christ Jesus. God gives us great sleep. That's why I really started taking a nap. I started taking a 30-minute nap. I never took naps. And my wife would come in and catch me at my desk, and I'd have my head on my desk. You know, I just need 30 minutes. So go lay down. No, I just, just leave me alone. I need 30 minutes. I realized I didn't need so she bought me a sissy couch at the office. And then Fritz got one side, don't have the other. I thought, how much money did you waste on a stupefied, sissified couch? And so it laid back there for about a month. And so I, you had to walk past, go back to the bathroom in this hallway we had. And one day I thought, well, I'll just sit down. I don't know nobody's stop. But I sit down. I just, I just laid down a minute. Well, I went right to sleep. I slept for about 40 minutes. Yeah, I but went. Joe, Joe, you got to admit, you're unusual. I've never seen anybody that can go to sleep. You'd almost think you have narcolepsy. <laughs> Is that what you call it when you just go to sleep anywhere? I can sleep anywhere, anytime. I'm asleep. We get on an airplane. I'm Is that asleep. the word? I don't think that's the word. Is that the word? Well, I don't know, but I'll I'll be asleep before the plane takes off. I get on that plane. And when everybody wants everybody gets in the aisle, put my belt I on. Look and see if that's the word. I lay my head back and I am gone. And so I'm a blessed man because I never have to worry about going to sleep. I go to sleep when my head hits that pillow. Boom, I'm gone. Angel talk to me sometimes. I lay down. So, hmm, uh, I read what, honey? I'm sorry. I'm asleep. What? Already, yeah. When I hit that pillow, I'm a, I'm gone. So, is that a word? <laughs> yeah, it is. Well, I guess there's a word for it. Yeah, chronic sleep disorder. That's what it is. Yeah. Well, but you just are a good sleeper. Yes, I'm blessed. Very. My daughter's like that too. Yeah. Oh yeah. That girl could sleep if if a she was at the drag races. <laughs> <laughs> but we're talking about those who can't sleep. What do you do? Well, you got to figure out something, you know, number one, if I was a doctor, he's going to say, drink eight glasses of water a day. You don't have enough water in your system. That's why you can't sleep. So just start gussing down the water. And, uh, second, you know, shut the TV off, get the TV out of your bedroom, no electronics in your bedroom. God designed the human to sleep one third of their life. So keep your bedroom a quiet place. Don't have TVs on in there and radios on in there and cell phones. Shut the stuff off and go to sleep. If it's urgent, somebody will knock on the door and wake you up. Because, well, something might happen, though. So, okay. <laughs> my, now, that's all I have to say about that. <laughs> I feel angels knee bump my knee. That means I'm through. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I think we need to start this one over again. <laughs> okay. My husband never learned how to share his feelings, but I needed emotional connection. Uh oh. Is there a way for me to break through? Is there any experience you've had that you can give me advice about? You know what? That is tough because somebody's got the walls up because probably they've been trained that way. That's right. That wall is tough, thick, been up a long time. Yep. So. Well, you got to have to share the truth. I tell couples, you got to at least sit down once a week and take 30 minutes to share it. Hey, we got 30 minutes. No, no 31 minutes, 30 minutes. Share anything we want. You want to share anything, share? No. Well, I like share something, you know, and uh, and just share what's on your mind, you know. Every time I try to share something, I don't I don't feel like we connect very much, 
you know, you sort of shut me out. I don't like being shut out. So if you shut me out, I'm going to go to somebody, somebody else that'll listen to me. So I'm either going to be gossiping over the back fence or share with some lady at church or somebody at work, you know, but, but I got to share with somebody. It's who I am. And so you got the five uh, love languages, it's a great book. It's very legitimate. It's biblical. People have different love languages. Some people love language actions, some words, some kind deeds. You better find out what your spouse's love language is. You better speak and speak it often. What's mine? I don't have a clue. I'm going to tell you quality time. Quality time. And we have quality time. We do. What is yours? I don't, I don't. I think, think words of affirmation. Words of affirmation. I like kind words. I respond to kind words. I don't respond to bad words. So I guess I respond to kind words. So words of affirmation would be mine. We've learned something here today from the book. It's a great book. It is a very good book. It is not making fun of it. I said to my son-in-law one time before they got married, I said, oh, your language of love is for sure quality time. And he says, no, it's not. Then about three months later, he goes, okay, yeah, it's, <laughs> it is quality time. <laughs> It's difficult when you have one person that's putting up guards and walls. Yes. So if you can't penetrate them uh, with very pointed questions, see, my family, we're the opposite. We say too much. Yeah. Um, yes, ma'am. That didn't was not required. That did not require <laughs> any <laughs> response. But thank uh, you. I just kind of affirm what you said. And so, uh, but I would say, if you can't get through to him, you probably need to go visit your pastor, go to a counselor, because yeah. if you don't, it's going to build up and blow up. It, you know, it's, it's got to go somewhere because you got to have some a release valve someplace. And again, you're trying to tell each other the truth. You just, honey, I know you don't talk much. You don't open up. I got to have somebody to talk to. It's just who I am. It's the way I'm made. So buy the book. Five below and give it to him. You read this book. I think different. I speak different than you do. I respond different. It is a great book. It is a great it book. It is a very, very good book. And I really would recommend it. Now, so we don't recommend many books outside the Bible. This would be one of them. Yeah, I would definitely recommend it. Yeah. Because it's very, very true. Yeah. True. And my daughter is gifts. When she was little, you could buy her a quarter gift and she would get, you would think you just gave her something from Tiffany's <laughs> and uh, she just still loves it. The other day I surprised her and bought her a some kind of concoction from <laughs> Starbucks. I don't drink coffee, so whatever it was. But anyways, thrilled her, made her day. And, uh, and I, your son. And I knew she, yeah, I knew she was having a. I bet it. Well, his is not that, but he <laughs> likes gifts, but that's not his language. I can promise you that. But um, anyway. No, it wasn't just a gift. It was a thing that somebody knows I'm going through a tough time. Somebody knows about me. Somebody's thinking about me. I'm not going through this by myself. And sometimes those little things you do, just simple things, you maybe spend $5 and buy somebody a cappuccino. And if they ever do share where you feel like their walls are coming down just a little bit, you know what I'd say? Pay attention. Pay attention and say, you know what? That meant the world to me that yeah. you felt safe enough to, to trust me to share that. Don't say, well, finally you're sharing something. No, yeah, no. that's not the way to respond. No. Yeah, just, man. But really, yeah, encourage them. And so that'll crack that door open a little bit more. So... Guys, thank you for listening today. We had a real good time talking with you. We love answering these questions, so send yours in if you get a chance, and we will go over them, I promise you. And if you felt like today was all over the map, give us another chance <laughs> next Monday. We'd love to <laughs> have you join us. We love you guys. Love you guys. <laughs> Be sure to join us Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to hear more of what God can do in your life. It's got a great future for you and your family, and we're here to help you get there. Please make sure you visit Joe McGee Ministries on Facebook, YouTube, and Instagram. There you find all of our Friday funny videos and other encouraging resources for you and your family. While you're at it, be sure to visit JoeMcGee.com. We have all sorts of materials, books, DVDs, you name it, all there to help you, your marriage, and your family succeed.